Who's the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighter to ever walk the earth? Today you're getting the answer, not based on opinions or hype, but on hard data, mathematics, and cold logic. To answer this, I analyzed over 234,000 fighters across 430,000 fights from promotions worldwide, not just the UFC. While crunching the numbers, I uncovered some wild facts. Who was the oldest fighter to step into the cage? Who has cage? the most wins? The most losses? What are the rarest and most ridiculous ways to finish a fight? Who has the most wins without a single loss? And finally, who's actually the best and and worst fighter of all time. And why this is not John Jones. You can't rely on a fighter's record alone to measure how good they really are. The skill level of their competition matters just as much. A fighter could dominate nobodies and rack up an undefeated streak, only to get exposed when facing true elites. Conversely, a mediocre-looking record might belong to a legend who consistently fought killers. So, how do we rank them fairly? While MMA often relies on intuition for matchmaking, other sports have developed systems to quantify an athlete's performance. Take tennis or chess, for example. That got me thinking, why not create something similar for MMA? No system is perfect at simplifying skills into a single number, but I've chosen one of the most proven, ELO. Chess players have used it for decades to determine skill levels, and it's been invaluable in identifying top competitors. To calculate ELO, we need data on every MMA fight ever held. So how do you get data on every MMA fight ever? Enter SureDog, the MMA fan's bible. Since 1995, they've chronicled promotions from every corner of the globe, American, Japanese, Russian, and maybe even your last street fight. Their database, weighing in at 200 megabytes of text, became the foundation for this analysis. Now that we have the data, how do we figure out the greatest? Here's how ELO works. It's a zero-sum game. The only way to gain points is to take them from someone else. Every new fighter starts with a rating of 1,500. There's also something called the K-factor, which determines how many points can be gained or lost in a single match. In chess, the K-factor is 32 for new players and drops to 10 for grandmasters to reduce volatility in established ratings. A higher K-factor means more sensitive ratings, especially for upsets. For MMA, I used a K-factor of 32 to track fighters gradually building their reputations. To find the greatest fighter, I focused on the highest ELO peaks and ranked fighters accordingly. Calculating the ELO ratings for hundreds of thousands of fights manually would be impossible, so I used Python to do the heavy lifting. Here's the list it produced. This list closely aligns with public opinion about the all-time greats, but with a few surprises. So who are these guys? Let's start with Gigard Mousasi. He's competed in the UFC but never won a championship there. Yet he's a six-time champion across promotions like Bellator, Dream, Cage Warriors, and Strike Force, making him arguably the greatest MMA fighter to never hold a UFC title. Then there's Patricio Pitbull Frere. Unlike Mousasi, he's never fought in the UFC, but he's a four-time Bellator champion and a massive star there. If you've ever wondered who the greatest non-UFC fighter is, now you know. This list is also remarkably diverse. Two Americans, two Russians, three Brazilians, a Canadian, an Australian, and one fighter from the Netherlands. It's funny that both Americans on this list are heavyweights. And speaking of heavyweights, I never expected to see Daniel Cormier here. With only 26 fights and 22 wins, his placement highlights how beating high-caliber opponents can outweigh sheer volume. His rivalry with John Jones is even more epic when you consider this. Here's how the current top fighters stack up. Islam Makachev is closing the gap on John Jones in the pound-for-pound -pound debate. While Jones is still number one, time isn't on his side. If Makachev can deliver a few more stellar performances, he could take the crown. So why exactly did I say that John Jones is not the greatest? You see, some rankings still don't make sense. For example, Movsar Evloev is rated higher than Ilya Tapuria, and Magomed Ankalaev outranks Alex Pereira. This happens because fighters who dominate higher-rated opponents don't gain as many points as they could. So I decided to increase the K-factor to adjust the sensitivity of the algorithm to upsets. And here's the new list. And this adjustment shows Makachev edging out John Jones. I believe this list is closer to the truth, because bouts are no chess matches. They happen rarely and should have more weight. If you're curious about rising stars, here's the current rating of the top 15 with a K-factor of 100. Now that we've found the best of all, let's find out who's the worst MMA fighter of all time. The lowest rated fighter is Reese Street, nicknamed Nightmare on Elm Street. His record, 0-42, with all losses in the first round. That's an achievement in itself. Meanwhile, the fighter with the most losses is only fourth worst, with 16 wins to his name. Travis Fulton holds the record for the most MMA fights, 315, and wins, 255, earning him the nickname Iron Man. 
The oldest MMA fighter is 80-year-old Skip Hall, who started his career at 57 and even made it to the UFC at the age of 59. So if you're in your late 20s and have never trained in your life, let this guy be your inspiration. There's even a record for a 105-year-old fighter, though that's likely a database error. On the ridiculous side, some fighters were disqualified for refusing to stand from their butts. And yes, a few fights ended because of sheer exhaustion. One guy gassing out two minutes into the first round. So, is ELO actually a good system to define the great greatest of all time. What if a fighter only fought weak opponents in great quantities? Wouldn't they get ahead? No, they wouldn't. ELO's entire purpose is to identify the best of the best, rewarding fighters who prove themselves against high-caliber opponents. If a fighter pads their record with weak opponents, they won't climb much. For example, if John Jones fought Reese Street, he would only gain 0.03 points. In contrast, beating Daniel Cormier again would earn him 10 points, equivalent to over 300 wins against Reese Street in terms of ELO gains. Not exactly the best strategy for farming ELO. If quantity were the measure of greatness, Travis Fulton would be way ahead of everyone else. However, he's only ranked 51st in all-time ELO highs, and his current rating places him at 2,541st. This highlights that while the ELO system isn't perfect, no system is, it's a far better indicator of greatness than just win-loss records. For instance, among the top fighters, only Khabib has a perfect record, yet he's ranked 8th, underscoring the importance of quality over quantity. And, if you ever wonder, there's no MMA fighter with a higher undefeated record than Khabib, which kind of makes him the best in this category. The closest undefeated record to his is 21-0, held by Movlid Kabalayev. If you're curious about your favorite fighter's standings, check out my free Patreon post. I've attached the top 1,000 fighters' standings there. And if you haven't seen my video on boxing ELO ratings, give that a watch too. Do you agree with this list? Is ELO flawed? Let me know in the comments, I read every single one. Until next time, peace.